Today on Crossing South, we have a treat. We see the culinary revolution and renaissance Tijuana is going through. We also visit the culinary school, which is at least partly responsible for it, coming to you right now. Well, you know, in 2013, they finished a nice little border crossing, which is very different than what you were used to before. Anyway, some of our viewers feedback, they've said that they want to see exactly how is the border crossing? Because they probably um, have the same stereotypical image they've seen on movies for years, whereas it's just a little dusty uh, toll booth with maybe a dingo and a guy with a sombrero uh, waiting to wave you through. But no, this is the actual border crossing. So there's a few things you should know that are a no-no in Mexico. So never cross these things. Ammo and guns. If you get caught with it, you're gonna spend some real time in an episode of In Prison Abroad from National Geographic, just so you know. So don't worry about it. It's not as daunting as it seems. It's pretty well marked. There's signs for every place you're going to. If you want to go downtown, the word is centro, kind of like center, but centro with an O at the end. And that's where we're going right now. We're going downtown to Revolution Avenue. If you're wondering where Revolution Avenue is, just think of the St. Louis Arch, just much smaller and silver colored. So basically, if you can see it, you're there. So this is Revolution Avenue at night, considered the epitome of tourist traps. Just a year ago, friends, I would have told you I had no interest in being here, but Revolution Avenue is experiencing a revival, which tells me that there's entrepreneurs looking for venues to showcase their stuff. You know, folks, normally when I talk about Tijuana, when I talk about Baja, I do tell people to stay away from Revolution Avenue because it's such a cliche. But places like this, the one I'm in right now, are changing my mind. Revolution Avenue is gaining a second wind. But we're going to learn about that right now. You're in for a treat, so stay with us. This is Crossing South. Revolution Avenue is a very high-profile venue, and savvy people are taking notice. Enter this guy, Chad. Chad, my friend. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Very good. How are you? <laughs> so, listen, you're you're one of few Americans who are doing this now. I mean, I know there's a lot of hipsters and a lot of trendy, little eclectic places opening up in Tijuana, owned by Mexicans. But uh, uh, do you know of any other Americans other than you doing this? Not in Tijuana. <laughs> Not yet. I mean, I, maybe there is somebody, but I don't know who they are. You're, you're quite yeah. the adventurer. Uh, huh? You know, I, I love this area, and uh, I, my creativity has always been very wild, so I think it fits right in with what I've been going with already. You're, uh, you're a brave one, and to Victor goes the spoils. It's a great place. It looks fantastic. Oh, Tell me so about much. it. So uh, La Justina is basically a, a Latin version of a gastro bar here in Tijuana. We have them all over San Diego. Uh, it's almost oversaturated. But what I want to do is, is embrace the, the history and the culture in the food throughout the states in Baja and put my interpretation on it without destroying its purity and disrespecting the culture that it came from. That's a good intention. Explain to me what's a gastro bar though. So gastro bar, this is a place where you're going to come in and get craft beer, craft cocktails. Um, a lot of the food is very um, uh, comforting. Uh, it's things that remind you of a, of a time and place. I want them to remember uh, an emotion, a, a feeling, a they've thought lived that they've lived before, uh, dining with their families and with their friends. Now, you, you are from where? I'm from Spokane, Washington, um, all the way to the other end of the border <laughs> with, uh, with Canada. I was 
a cook in the military, and my mom said, Chad, you've been an artist your entire life. You've drawn, you've painted everything. That 10-inch white plate is a canvas. Draw on it with food. And from that point on, I knew what I wanted to do. So when, you, when I say artistic, the food on the plate is all art. And I think the, the consumers are what the benefits, right? Absolutely, but it doesn't taste like a Corolla. <laughs> you know, like, it doesn't taste like a crayon. <laughs> I mean, you, you were stationed in San Diego. Yeah. You probably came down once. What made you think, I can open a restaurant down there? You know, it was really, it had a lot to do with my partners. The partners that I have, they are young, hip guys. They're extremely popular down here. I mean, we've been open for four months, and we reached a thousand followers per month. What? So we're over four thousand followers. I've had restaurants have been open for a lot longer than this, and we don't even have four thousand followers yet. So like the explosion down here, these guys, this energy—they made it very easy for me to come on board. Your partners, my partners. Are they American or are they? Uh, they're Mexican? all they're all Mexican. Okay, so they've, they've they've studied in America. They went to college. They came back and opened up their own businesses down here. So Chad, uh, a lot of the things that are going down here in TJ, the uh, culinary scene, is all about the food. What are you doing here, food-wise? Well, I mean, first off. I'm friends with a lot of chefs that are in this area, and we all feed off of each other. Um, our styles definitely blend in and out. You know, I learned things from working with Javier, with working with Miguel Angel Guerrero, you know, uh, Diego Hernandez and Humberto. Um, and, and things that I learn th through them is at events where I'm cooking with them, and I'm seeing things that I've never seen before. But where I bring in something a little bit different is I was trained completely different. You know, I grew up in French um, cookery kitchens, um, Italian restaurants and those kinds of things. So I'm bringing styles of cooking that I've learned there and applying it to some of the you know old world um, Baja dishes that, that are found from down here. Is it the, the land of culinary opportunity? Like what's going on down here? I mean 100%. You know, I, I keep, I kept, I've been coming down for a long time and I was like, wow, is something, are this stuff going to get oversaturated? Is, is it going to end up dying? Like what's going to go on? It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like this giant bubble. I don't think it's ever going to burst. The culinary uh, schools down here are doing an amazing job. The guys that are coming out have been far more advanced than some of the culinary students that I have coming to my restaurants in the U.S. Really? I kid you not. The, the equipment that they're using, the techniques that they're learning, they're not just teaching them about the history. They bring them to the forefront of what the culinary trends are going on right now in the community. So when they come out, they already know what's going on. And they're able to jump into the workforce without like this extensive training. Right. Whereas a lot of times in some of the situations, I'm not trying to talk bad about corner schools, but sometimes you got to tell them like, listen, forget everything that they taught you. I need to teach you a completely different way. And over here, they already got it now. That culinary school, we've heard a lot about that. We're going there in a few moments, so. Okay, Chad, I'm getting kind of nervous here. <laughs> few things may be giddy as much as uh, delicious food, and I think I'm giddy right now. Now, this reminds me of like street vendor corn, uh, you know, vendors. Is, is, is that an inspiration? Absolutely, this is, you know, corn with butter, mayonnaise, chicharron, uh, cotija cheese, and some cilantro on top, and a little bit of um, um, some spiced chili. So, so just a spoonful? Just, yeah, get a good spoonful and get some of that stuff on the sides. You know, it's crazy. My wife loves the, these street vendor corn uh, cups. And she loves chicharron. She should be doing this episode. Right? <laughs> All right, so let's, let's, let's put it in. It's so good. I wish I could articulate the taste. <laughs> it's just great. That's all I can say, man. Excellent. Are these oysters? So these are bahia falsas. On top, you have a little thin layer of lardo, which is uh, cured uh, pork fat, avocado that's been pickled with uh, kaffir lime. Just like your traditional oyster, get it right in front of you, um, turn it around. I always put my finger right in the back tip just to kind of get a little, a little push. I'm not a big oyster fan, and that was delicious. Thank you very much. Wow. Now this stuff right here, what kind of meat is this? So this is actually fish. This is um, yellowtail. Underneath you have like this romesco mole style sauce. Basically a mole that you would blend, you know, nuts into. Okay. Right? That's what makes it a romesco. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let, let's try it then. Mm.
It's almost like a combined cooked sushi. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> This is gluttony at its best, all right? We have uh, pork belly that we cure. Pork belly, now this, this sweet sauce, you, you mentioned, what, what was it made of? So we have lavender honey, and then there's pickled apple. Look at this thing. Look at this baby. Chad, am I gonna lead some Lipitor after eating this? We got some in the back. <laughs> Actually, I lied, but there's a pharmacy about a block from here. <laughs> am I gonna need a defibrillator after this, Chad? Tell me the truth, man. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Fatty goodness. We actually uh, hand out complimentary um, angioplasty in the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, it's going in. Chad, this is fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic, my friend. Thank you. It's fantastic. Wow, I think this might be my favorite. I wonder why, Why right? The fattest one. So what do you call this one again? So this is the Borrego and Frijoles pizza. Borrego, now that's lamb. Does this have lamb? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. You've got lamb, you've got beans, you've got chicharron. What else you got in here? That's pretty much it. Pretty much it, A little right? bit of green onion on top. All right. Good job, good job. Appreciate that. I know you're gonna be successful because if you keep this up, there's no reason not to. So thank you for what you're doing. And thank you, uh, thank you for having us today, right? Absolutely. This is Crossing South, folks. Stay with us, more to come. I'm gonna finish this, so if you can just like. I'm telling you, this experience is making a convert out of me. From a revolution hater to a revolution lover. So now we move to Eastern Tijuana, away from the manicured areas. We shall pay a visit to a place partly responsible for this culinary revolution slash renaissance Baja California and mainly Tijuana is experimenting. You know folks, the culinary explosion that's happening in TJ is not entirely fortuitous. There's actually a deliberate effort to pump out world-class chefs that can use the local ingredients with also old world techniques. So we're going to get to meet those people right now. Stay with us. The Tijuana Culinary Arts School has been recognized internationally over its architecture. It's a pretty neat design, but we are much more interested in what these students are cooking up. No pun intended. Okay folks, so the man responsible for having such a place here in TJ that's really forging the future chefs of Baja that are gaining world renown is Mr. Javier Gonzalez and he's right here next to me, my friend. Not many. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice seeing you again. Nice seeing you again. Nice how how you are again. you? Tell me how you've been. I mean, well, what's well, going uh, on here? Well, you know something? We are uh, actually in our 10 years. Uh, we've been here since uh, 2003 in Tijuana. Really? Uh, when I was young, at that time, there were none any culinary school in Mexico. None? None. Your wife is a chef, right? Yes, my, my wife is a chef and uh, she's a sommelier. She studied in, in, in Chile for becoming a, a sommelier. What's the difference between a connoisseur and a sommelier? The connoisseur, well, the connoisseur knows about the wine, about all those things, but the sommelier has the deep knowledge about it. Nowadays, uh, we at the school, we have the sommelier diploma. Here in the school? Yes, right here at, at, at right. Culinari, which uh, is uh, one year and a half, uh, coming once uh, weekly. Our main uh, diploma is uh, just a Culinary Art School degree. Okay. It, uh, is, it takes two years, and it is 60% uh, practical. 40% theoretical. So, I mean, that, what does that diploma mean? It means I'm a chef when I graduate, or what? No, well, le let's be clear on that. Okay. No, you're a cook. <laughs> right. Okay, you're a cook. That's important <laughs> to say. You know why? Because if not, in instead of, of, uh, of uh, giving, uh, of, of doing a favor to the student, you then uh, start to giving them the, the bad attitude and position. Just because if not, what happened when you say to a boy who's been with us for three years, okay, you're the chef, then they're going to be outside and they 
uh, think that they are rock stars. <laughs> and the attitude, you know, that the red carpet to become a chef, uh, it is going to be a title that it will be given by the chefs, the, the one that I already chefs, and by your customers. But I have heard chefs that are opening restaurants praise your students. They're mm -hmm. saying that the students from here are coming out with very real world practical knowledge catered to what's going on here in Tijuana. There's, there's a very interesting point here. In this moment, we have students working in uh, 12 different countries, working. No, right now. not internships. Right now. We have people in France, we have people in New Zealand, You're we have people in uh, Belgium, in, of course, United States, Canada. Do you get any feedback from the places? Yes. We are, we the are student very... you sent was like no, top notch or something. Do you get like feedback from the yes. people? They say a measure of a teacher is in the quality of a student. So when we came here 10 years ago, I remember that it was uh, hard times for Tijuana. Right. right. Uh, and right now, you know, there's uh, wonderful art. Yes. There's fantastic beer. What about wines, olive oil, uh, vegetables, and all uh, surrounding, of course, the Baja California cuisine. The best part of Baja California is the people from Baja California. Wow. They are brave. They are fantastic. They are sincere. No, that, what's the, the magic point here? Baja California doesn't have to tie it to any product or any style or any technique. It's free. It's free. free to go wherever <laughs> the cook would like to go. I mean, we are in the borderline, but there's no borders here. <laughs> Tijuana is the land of culinary opportunity. Yes. Would you agree yes, with that? I totally agree. I, uh, you're doing a very good job, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think you're ensuring good tasting food, not only for Tijuana, mm -hmm. but to wherever your students go. So thank you. We're going to take a tour now of your uh, facilities, if you don't mind. Feel at home. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Look real close, folks, because these right here might be the ones serving your plate in the very near future. This is crossing south. So uh, we're here with uh, Aurora, right? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Yeah, Aurora. nice to meet you. <laughs> now, you're, you're the person in charge of internships and yeah. sending your students out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. wh what's your process? What do you do? They can choose a place. So uh, you, you make some sort of agreement with different yeah. institutions? Yeah, yeah. We have in the whole world, like in Spain, um, Italy, England, um, South Africa, uh, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Guatemala. Wow. Yeah, Uruguay. So what determines who goes where? Just where they choose or? Yeah, they okay. have to choose uh, three places. Now, now, when you place your students, how, how do they live over there? I mean, what arrangement is there for, for board, for lodging, for, you know, how do they sustain themselves? Where do they live? Okay, we have some places that they offer to the student, the... the a lodging a accommodations? Lodging, yeah. And also, in all the, all the places, give them the, the the food during the hours they are working. Uh, right here, we have where they re the students receive the theoretical part of the career. Right. And we have uh, four small classrooms, and the one. I, I, I hear action in there. Yeah. Is there a class going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. You, if you, yeah, if you yeah, want, yeah. we can go. We walked in on a class with students from all over Mexico, taking what equates to postgraduate studies on Mexican high cuisine. A sort of master's degree, if you will. I mean, it looks like, like a truck container, like a container, like from a semi-truck container. Yeah, well, that was one of the intentions. It's and by design, we, right? Yeah. And also we are a uh, smoke-free school. Very nice. Good. <laughs> I don't want my clothes, my, uh, I don't want yeah. my, my food tasting like yeah, tobacco, yeah. right? Yeah, and well, we are very ecologist. The sweet tooth yeah. room? Yeah, yeah. This All is right. one of the... This is where I would live, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can use this. It's asymmetrical, you know? <laughs> so it's not a perfect square. <laughs> You're gonna make truffles? Yeah. yeah. So you guys learn how to make desserts here? Yeah, a lot of, this. well, this class is especially about chocolate. Yeah, we use different kinds of chocolate. This is white chocolate, and we've got uh, milk chocolate and dark chocolate. 
So he's telling me there's a chocolate class? So you, you become chocolatiers here or what? I mean, what's going on here, man? Mm, well, that is one of, of the tasks, how to do uh, chocolates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're becoming chocolatiers. And, yeah. Man. Can you like be trying your own things as you're cooking? Yeah, yeah. They try it at, at the end of the class <laughs> <laughs> to, to know how... He's like, it, one for the class, one for me. And that's why you can see why all the people in the office we are very happy because we all, they always uh, share with us what they do in the class. <laughs> I want to work here now. Yeah, we always try <laughs> the chocolate, the candies, uh, the food and everything. Also, that is like kind of uh, nutritive food. Nutritious. Nutritious. Let's not kid ourselves. This is all, <laughs> <laughs> it's all enjoyment. I don't know about the nutritional value, uh -huh. but it's pretty good darn good. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll come back when you're cutting the milk chocolate so we can inspect a piece from that as well. <laughs> so let's check out the other rooms okay. we have. Uh -huh. So we sadly leave the sweet room. Yeah. <laughs> to my chagrin, but okay, let's go to the next one. Ooh. How do you like it? <laughs> Talk to me about this place. What what happens in this in this room? Okay, this is where we cook uh, all the salted um, the salty delights. Salty delights, yeah. Very good. Uh -huh, that's why we have the this, this oven. Brick yeah, oven. brick oven. You know, bread. Brick the pizza pie, yeah. the pizza surprise. Yeah. Right? Okay, okay. Sorry. Also, yeah. like other kind Horrible of Italian bread. You know. Stereotype. Uh -huh. And also, <laughs> we have um, this oven. That they what do you do use. down there? Is this like the cabrito the thing cabrito, they do where they bury it? Or? Yeah, yeah. Really? And borrego and all the, you know, the art traditions. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody naively <laughs> left this for me. So. Mm, mm, sorry. <laughs> wow, nice stove. What does this do? <laughs> Okay, now this room, this kind of looks like like a nifty place where maybe, you know, a famous chef would, you know, teach you uh, a very specific course mm -hmm. or so on. Um, is that accurate? Is that what this place is? Yeah, yeah. We bring um, some chefs from here, from Tijuana, and also from other um, places from Mexico, Mexico uh -huh. and also for from other countries. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think the, two years ago we have here Rick Bayless. Rick Bayless. Yeah. He came here. Yeah. And he he brought a uh, brought a big group of chefs. Really? All from United States. I saw the uh, monitor. Yeah. And I'm like, where's the camera? I, I found it. Yeah. That's right yeah, there. We, ha we have some. It should be pointing at what they're yeah. doing, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So you're basically teaching them to be cooking show hosts for yeah. TV, right? Yeah. Part <laughs> of, of, her, of, of the career. Yeah. yeah. We, we're really happy that you exist and happy that you were able to share with our viewers uh, the people you're forging in this in this place. Okay, thank you very much, and no, it was my pleasure. No problem. Okay. So that's it, folks. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time. This is Crossing South. So after experiencing the most capable of causes in the form of this awesome culinary school and the most delicious of effects in the cuisine of La Justina, we become excited in anticipation just thinking of what else we'll find the next time we cross south. You can find maps and information about the places you just saw, or you may order a copy of this program on DVD at CrossingSouth.com. We also do Facebook.